They're betting on a whole lot of mid laners because they can pick it up here. The Vexana is still up for grabs, so even though they didn't pick it in the first phase, they can just pick it up here to and further then, enable the Masha as well. But honestly, do they want to just go for range at this point, right? Do they want to go for something like an Ovaria? Ooh, that's an option. Not a bad option right here, but with their style, I think Vexana works a lot better. And they have a lot of heroes that can really bait out the engage and have a similar situation to that last fight in game number one, where the Tarizla was the target. If, it, if the target was the Masha or the Barats, a Vexana can just bring so much value in the counter engage department. So I'm gonna take again. I believe the minor adjustment to Masha, to Masha in this past patch is um, numbers. The it's range, numbers yeah, the range of the basic, basic attack, attack is mm -hmm. enhanced by 0 0.2, and I yep. think that's. Pretty like it's not really the biggest thing, but so far one of the weakness of Masha is his range as a melee hero is terrible. Yeah, very very bad. And I believe the other adjustment is uh, the less HP needed to proc your skill in the late game. So this is also a late game um, scaling hero in a way for Dixon. So let's see what's gonna be what's gonna happen. I'm still shocked, man. Me too. I'm still man. out of words. Me too. What are Onyx. the chances? What do they want to pick up now, right? Knowing that there's a Masha in the team, there's also a Valentina. What major do they want to pick up for Sans? Is still a Vexana? They need a bit more consistent suffers. damage, I think, to just melt through. Penetera for Lutpi. Okay, but it's going to be a gore. Yes. That's dangerous, though. Yeah, An immobile gourd against a Masha. Oh, by the way, now it doesn't. Masha no longer disarms. But she actually does a lot of damage still. And the cooldowns have been reduced as well, Shavin, on top of the other buffs. So it's going to be a very spammable playstyle. A spammable uh, a fighter with a lot of spammable skills. So now I'm wondering if, it, if there's going to be a split push kind of situation right here. Because there was, at this point, kind of notorious for it. It's wait, a wait a minute! Oh, Masha Rome! Oh my god! It's a Masha Rome to counter the Rome! You special hero. And he's looking to get his revenge in this game number two. The Apostles of God is looking to close this out against Onik, the Sky Kings. Welcome to the Land of Dawn. All right, let's calm down a little because the game has only just begun. I am Ooh. very interested to see the aggression, I was going to say, but Keys is the one on the receiving end. A bit of a cheese move by Onik right there to get an early advantage. But when it comes to clear, the Baksha will have a lot better time here compared to the Barats. Trion is buffing. He's yeah. helping Lanaya to be able oh, to... Oh, look at damage! Secure. That damage. Oh my god. He gets scratched nice. twice and Keyboy gets zoned away. But it's kind of interesting, right? It's kind of a fun fact that the guy on the Masha is Drian. The once former Sky King is the one who has the thunder clap in his arsenal. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, look at the look at the handle. Master Assassin. Okay, <laughs> yeah, he's not holding Arlen, back be at careful, all. Keyboy, be careful. He's out there for Ooh. aggression, man. But whoa, Keyboy. Like we said, he is the one in the most danger right here. Because Kyrie, I don't think we'll be face checking. It's always gonna be Keyboy later on, especially in the mid-game. So we'll have to see. He has to try and get some defensive itemization out in the early game here, man. Because otherwise, that means Onik will have no control whatsoever. They won't have any vision to play around with. The flexibility of this Masha. You can invade, you can split push, and who the hell is gonna take care of the Masha when it's a 1v1? How do you counter that? When it's gonna be like Lord Take for 4-1 uh, composition or like 4-1 strategy for Dewa United? Who's gonna solo lane it? You have to remember that now, if the HP bar gets depleted for a Masha, she removes the crowd control. So even if they want to try and lock her down in the late game later on and burst her down with the combined efforts of Albert and Sans, let's say, there's going to be a time where Drian will be able to like escape from the crowd control and turn it back or escape, so it's even harder to pick off. Already really good job for Dixon. Shield unit petrify as well, mind. Dixon. With a flicker out. Ooh. Kyrie's still doing some damage right now. It's the eye for an eye. All the way oh. to back. Dixon is still able to survive with one last pop. Mystic Gosh over the Sans and a flicker in two. Ooh. By K, Sans and Lupi, level 3. Masha on duty. Over on this turtle is Lanaya. He's not going to be able to secure right now. The final ball gets popped in. Lanaya will fall to Lutpi. First blood by Onik and the first turtle too. Already seeing some weakness from the Masha. Very bad use or like very uh, little use in an objective fight. All she can do is just try to zone out some members. But if the damage is not enough, if it's a Baksha, 
with the ultimate. What do you do with it? Well, in the early game, there's not much you can do. But you have to remember, hey, when the mid, the mid game rolls around, Dewa can try and use the notorious split push Drian to try and get something done right here. And that way, they also free up the Terizla from lane oh, duty. Oh, no! Lanaya! No one saw that, no one saw that. Oh. Don't worry. Yes, uh, Dixon will be free up from lane duty to participate in the fight, but Lanaya... No one saw that, it's okay. No, everybody saw no, that. No, 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 it didn't happen. It happens for, uh, with the best of us, you know? Just keep denying it, man. No, no. So no. far, 1.1 1. 1 You want to see it happen. <laughs> I want to see the Drian Thunderclap. Oh, oh, oh. Boom! Thunderclap! No damage yet, though. Only half HP. Regen's back up. Albert's good. Corrosion's tight for a sign for Albert. It's not, a, not a huge amount of damage, but still quite dangerous. One level advantage for Kyrie. Looking at the items right here, Dreadnought armor is all across the board for sure, except for the Roamer, right? Because Drian's going for some damage. But happy feet from Keys. He's kind of well known on playing this Valentina. Yep. I do wonder later on what kind of. Is it just going to be the final slash and the Mystic Gush? Or is he going to try and go for those Electo final blows? Man. Steal the final blow, so. Makes yeah. you think. Mm -hmm. Well, possibility is quite low, but still. It's not zero, but. Masha pick. If it's time to choose, it's now, right? Because so far, I believe Dow United is still looking to bounce back. And if you want to dethrone the Onyx and, you know, get the impending doom that I talked about with Mirko saying that, yep, might be one of the key of Onyx. Oh, downfall. Lanaya, though. Final blow. Or final slash, rather. Onto Lanaya in the back. Oh. Doing the same thing to Sans. Oh. Diving deep. Sans forced to flick around. Now Albert with a blazing duet. And that's a Mystic Gush, too. Oh. Oh. Two big ultimates utilized here as Drian gets taken down. But on the other side of the map, it's a one for one trade. A Kyrie Baksha taken down for a Lanaya Barats. Look at the isolation, Arashi. The isolation. The only. Drian was the only member from the United in the front line taking two away from Onik. And there's no DPS. And he burned two massive teamfight ultimates, the Mystic Gush and the Blazing Duet. If he keeps burning it before every neutral objective fight, then Onik almost can't win in a, pr in a proper fight. And look at the, the damage earlier. It's only very early on. Only a, a Warhammer, I believe, for Drian. But he's able to almost one-shot Sans there. I mean, like just, just run him down and delete him eventually. So we have to see now that it's back to a reset, is Drian gonna do the same thing? G-Boy, final slash on a case now, all alone, isolated, still able to flicker out the safety, but it's very, very low. Now can seal play. A final blow to the back with Lanaya, now chain CC'd. He gets it, enters, welcome off, but it's gonna be Kyrie who secures it. Drian in the midst of it all, still now isolated from the team, all the way to Dixon and Kays in the mid lane. What? Still a thunderclap by oh. Drian. We're gonna run Sans down, but he gets stunned and taken out by the big bad laser from Sans. I don't know about that play, Drian. I think he's forcing it a bit too much, still playing with his limits, but in the bottom lane though, there's still some trades. Oh, again, another final splash on the case. This time, no flicker to help him. Dixon as well, caught in the choke point now, and it will be Keyboy who takes the double. Kyrie and Keyboy back in his prime form, just two manning, man marking everyone in the back line. Or even the front line of Gary United, and this still somehow gets it with the DPS from the Boxia. It's almost interesting how. They were just kept going forward right there. Even Drian diving 1v4. Not what you expect, oh, wow. but he might be at it again. He just flexed it. Drian oh, again, though, chasing Albert with a dash. Drian getting outmaneuvered, now stunned up. And the Mystic Gush with Albert who pops the battle mirror image to get the last hit. Truly is the act of thievery. Man, this is back to the quote-unquote feeding roamer strategy. <laughs> we haven't seen it in a while. It was the Diggy and the Masha that was so effective at utilizing the strat. We'll have to see though. But Drian with the Hepnesis, once again, almost really one-shot Albert, despite the fact that he was a level below and all that. So we'll have to see. Keyboy trying to match that kind of aggression play. All alone, Albert is there, but he's gonna be brought back to the team. Has the flicker, gets out, penalties oh, all. Oh, oh. Onto the little crab. Kyrie shielding the re-engage over with the Mystic Gush as well, but Drian once again, the Thunderclap into the back, forcing a flicker out from Sans. Now they're forced into a weird fight, but the final slash. <laughs> Gets him so low, that was a... Wow! I didn't expect that damage from Keyboy. Or was it Drian who's just so far behind? I think the HP bar is not really much for Masha for the each one, but could be though. Getting the use of that team fight, that was a 4v5. 
and Onik won the team fight and also won the macro gameplay. Yeah, look beyond this Benedetta. We said he was very linear, and linear he is in this game. All he does is keep pushing. Hasn't been doing any crazy rotations, crazy flanks. And now look at that. Sticks and melts it down, flickering out though. Penalty zone defensively. And what is he doing by Albert? Onto the black, onto Kays as well. The final flash, what Kays? Trying to use it to the other side. Lupi going on the chase. The entropy is there to zone Lupi away as a double kill. Gets secured by Sans in the mid lane. Two for one once again. Oh man, Ooh. looks like the experiment is not working out for Dewa United. The last Kage might be biting too much here. So far, the KDA. He's full damage. Zero yes. for zero. Not to mention, he has a half to see built up. That's partially why it looks like he oh, no. is doing so much damage. What though? Entropy to Whoa. get out. Lutpi now caught oh, in a oh, very oh. tough spot. Driad, he caught San, so I guess. What? Five death for one Sans. Is it worth it? <laughs> it's a shot done as well, by the way. The, the longer this game goes, the more... Hold up, let him cook. Yeah, the, the, the more it's going to be annoying, man. Because now, the Thunderclap, it doesn't scale with max HP, right? That's why it's a different place out altogether. Drian needs to build damage for the Thunderclap to actually scale. But if he does have damage, he can one-shot the backline here, man. We, we're already seeing it. How many flickers, how many sprints has yeah. been burned because of Drian just running at you? And what is farming very well? Uh-oh. Oh, 1v1, the Bakja, the Tortoise versus what? Nah, you're not gonna win this, bro. He can't. Yes, tank jungle. More damage than assassins. That's why. And what I really like about Trian's gameplay so far is he pretty much disregard all of the team plays, all of the strategy that they have. Uh, it took some like five main rotations, five main um, team fight. He's just soloing. He's just going by instinct. Doesn't really care if he's feeding, and he's going like again. Yard? I'm not too sure. Oh my god! Oh, oh, Lupi gets taken what? low. <laughs> it was safe with the eye for an eye. 150 Rush. 160 now. Yeah. But still deals that much damage, Rashi. It's a one item Masha, man. Almost two at this point. Imagine two. That is insane. I feel like the, the end game here, the evolution of this chat so far, it has to be with Drian just going solo, split pushing now. With a damage build, he can take down targets fast. He can probably de delete. The Benedetta a lot faster than the Benedetta can counter. I feel like that's what they're trying to build towards. Later on, once Watt has cashed up in farm, once they're ready for a team fight, they're gonna send Drian off, I feel like. See the mid lane, Lanaya trying to defend. Albert CG down real good with the help of Sans and Keyboy just escorting him in that mid lane. Lord number one for Onik. 14 to 4 in kill department, 10 kills. The difference and 7k in 10 minutes. Quite the difference so far, but Drian, for sure, he's not gonna give up. He's still looking for his revenge. One more step to glory. One more step to another W for Dewa United. Damage dealt, Arashi. Damage dealt. Albert still on top there. Keyboy. Keyboy second. <laughs> Drian He's third. Seven man. This is a Rome versus Rome situation. It was highlighted, but we didn't think it's gonna play out <laughs> quite like this. But we'll see, man. With the Lord right here. They don't really have a lot of space to really maneuver. Onik are gonna try and use this moment to really try and get some objectives before Ooh. Drian is back at it again. Mystic Gush baited out, but Watt does get zoned away. The turret will be able to clear out the Lord with the Havalanaya and Kays. In the mid lane though, tier two should be taken down by Onik, and certainly now with the zone of Kyrie and Keyboy, it'll be very easy to take. Another anomaly on that stat earlier is Watt is supposedly the lowest dealing damage members from the United. So a whole complete different story from game number one. This Natan is not Nataning. He still needs to wait. Yeah. Yeah. He hasn't been participating in this fight, so it makes sense that his damage output is going to be low. But I do wonder for Dewa why did why they went with the uh, the Valentina right here? Because I feel like a bit more crowd control, a bit more AOE, right? Utility would be very beneficial. But I guess they were expecting the whole fights to go quite like this, right? Full on barreling at each other, the fighters against fighters in the front line, and Valentina can do a lot of work in that situation. So we'll see if it really pays off. Because so far. I feel like I would prefer keys on the Vexana instead. Yeah, a lot more uses, especially in the high ground department. On oh, the passive, it's gonna work wonders, and also going one if he actually used it. Might be a safety thing as well, right? Against the yep. against all these dive heroes, he doesn't want to go for something quite like the Vexana that can be vulnerable once you do get on top of her. I think mainly it's the follow up issue, right? For the Vexana, very hard to follow up a very mobile, super fast 
Masha. So they want someone to be able to dash in and help the Masha when things get tough, when Drian gets one thunderclap in, right? Because we did see that damage. Yeah. If someone is able to follow up instantly, that's at least a trade. That's one for one. Is it a BOD being built? Yep. Yes. <laughs> well, Bro. that's one item, Masha, Miracle. <laughs> but I think the longer the game goes... Wait for a two. Yeah, Drian doesn't need any help from his teammates. There you go! And BOD. that is huge. It's time. And Sans actually building brute force and breastplate. <laughs> I like that. I like that yeah. unit movement speed, unique physical defense to kind of evade all his damage from Drian. Whoa. Very aggressive from Dixon. What? what? Brutality. Early popped as well. Okay, final stack on Albert right now. It plays into Wedge, shreds them down. Drian jumps into the back, but it's only going to be able to find oh, one oh my member. God. Oh. He does take one with him. That's a shutdown. What now against the world? 1v2. Lifty with Eye for an Eye and a Phantom Stack, but what a nature is still there. Why? Going to be able to shred him down before anything, but Keyboy gets rid of him as well. Lord Slain by Onik. It's a wipeout for the Sky Kings. And man, that engage was messy. Oh, yeah. Very, very questionable. Probably one of the questionable engages so far in this season. Dixon, that was with a flicker too, I believe. That was one of the engages of all time, man. That's, <laughs> that was quite interesting. Now with the Lord though, with Onyx just cutting the waves immediately, they're gonna try and go for an end before it just gets out of control. But with Dewa back, they're gonna be backing away. That's how how scared they are of Drian! Oh, the brute force breath blade to win work! Doesn't but work! My God, that damage that from Drian! The brute force does not work. That is ridiculous. Blade armor right now, Sans. Blade armor. I'm telling you, man. Sans, immortality, Sky Guardian helmet, blade armor, and steel leg plates, all right? I feel like the only way he can really survive here, he, he has to, like, kite away. This is exactly why whenever I go on a mage against something like a Masha, something like, let's say for argument's sake, a Zilong, right? They can just keep chasing you, or, or Yutong. I always go for sprint, because you know that you're gonna be chased down, and a simple flicker will not be able to save you. You have to either kite back independently, or rely on your teammates. And right now, Sans is just stuck trying to go independent, but it's not enough. Even with the brute force, he's just getting caught so, so fast. The sprint preacher is back at it again. And so far, we've seen we've talked about Drian too much, but we're getting sidetracked by the fact that Keyboy is 609 on Arlet. Now, Drian helped a lot with that, but still, this Kidia is very, very unfamiliar in roaming any kind of roam. It's an insane KDA. Yeah. In 15 minutes. He's 27 and 0. It's a very crazy KDA. Stunned up, don't miss the projectile. Oh, oh projector oh. as well. Oh. Punishing Keyboy. Oh wow. Oh, look at the burst coming down. Miss the gutch as well. It's Lanaya who gets picked up. Early zone onto the back though. And again, Dixon goes in alone. Disconnected completely from the team. Onik now capitalizing on it. Keyboy didn't even die. 3v5 now. No Lanaya, oh. no Dixon. Keyboy jumps in. What able to sidestep. Now Drian on the back, jumping once again with a thunderclap. He will be taking low, but a mystic gush out of the back gets K's low as well. Another final ball oh! to the back, and Lupi deals with K's. Walk versus the world, stunned up, team CC'd and taken out. Oh. 23 to 7. This is your final stat line of game number two. Dewa, the Masha turned Nasha. This might be a deja vu, man. We might be looking at deja vu last season. It was.